Hi everyone, this is update 11 for the Cheltenham Festival of 2020 and uh, we've got quite a few new subscribers uh, we'll mention the bets we've placed so far for this uh, festival and doing my best to make a third winning uh, festival in a row this season so there haven't been so many races to look at this week with the festival in mind obviously solo but apart from that not much and the triumph doesn't really interest me so I'm going to talk about a couple of handicappers that I've been quite interested in and uh, with a view at the festival and I'll just go through a couple of bets that I'd maybe look at for the first two days of the festival. So quickly for new subscribers, um, we've placed 200 of the 500 bank this season on Honeysuckle for the Mares at 5 to 1 Lost in translation for the Gold Cup at 9-2. Dolcita for the Mayor's Novice at 8-1. to one, And Riders on the Storm each way for the Ryanair at 16-1. You can go through and see the analysis of those bets uh, on the other videos. We've placed two other bets this season. Um, on the Welsh National, the winner at 20-1 to one we backed. The only bet. And the only bet at the Dublin Racing Festival was Osterian for launch who won at 8-1 to one when he was advised. He was actually 10s in a place, but we called it 8-1. to one. So we've had a great time on the videos. People that have been with us from the start, if they've been backing them, have done really well. I know full well that the Cardis have backed them, and none of them have got any of the winnings. So I've got to try and keep winning. And I will try and keep winning, because I back all these horses myself. And um, it's important to me to try and make a profit. It's important to me that... If I'm going to make these videos, that I try and give people good bets. I'm not saying they'll all win, because they certainly won't. They haven't in the two uh, two years at the festival. We had one winner the first year, but we made us £167 profit. And the second year we had three winners and made £870 profit. So the videos have done well, but keeping that going is not going to be easy. And I hope people remember the winners if the, if more don't come. So a couple of, I talked about a handicapper last week and I was worried about one horse called Glenlow and so I didn't put the handicapper up, Kilfillan Cross. Glenlow comes out of the race and here we are, we could have been on a 33-1 to bet at 14-1 and I never put him up. So talked about him, never put him off and there's been a few of them in the updates if you go through them. So the, the handicappers I want to talk about today, they're both JP horses Um the first is gonna run over two mile four in the the close brothers, the, the old close brothers. The last race on the first day, odd in the brown advisory plate, and the horse is uh, Champagne Platinum of Nicky Henderson's. I think he's been hiding his uh, true talent this season. He's got well handicapped of 138. If he gets into the novice handicap, he'd be a right good bet. That's on the 5:30 on uh, Tuesday. But if he has to go to the brown advisory plate, he'll be in against hardened handicappers there it might be a bit more difficult for him he's definitely been hiding his true ability his third to itchy feet was a really good run and, and a race that you should probably watch he doesn't jump so well but i think the application of money and a bit of effort could see him jumping a lot better he's one for me and the one i watched last week on uh, thursday in ireland joseph o'brien's front view front view well that's definitely a horse to take forward I'm not sure he was out to win last Thursday and if he was out to win he didn't put a whole lot of effort into trying to go with five o'clock when he made his run. He certainly could have blocked five o'clock's run and he didn't even try to and um, he was allowed to come home in his own time. Now the w one worry with this horse is his hurdling isn't as slick as what you'd hope for in a horse who's going to go into a tough handicap. I've bucked this horse at 12 to 1 any race just to win. It's not been for a huge stake because I'd rather buck him each way for the target once it becomes known. He's in three races at the festival. He's in the County Hurdle, the Coral Cap and in the Martin Pipe. Now wherever he goes I'll be interested in him. So that's my thoughts on two handicappers which I feel are... Uh, looked like plots to me going forward to the festival uh, quick thoughts on day one and two because normally I'd be going through horses I fancied um, or my thoughts on horses for last week 
and there wasn't really a whole lot of them. So I'd definitely be looking at our bet that we won on an Asterian for launch. I'd be I'd be thinking he was the each way bet at five to one in the Supreme. Um, five to two. He's double the price of Shiskin, who's just a potential horse. And I would far rather have him than have the potential horse. And even if the potential horse turns out to be really good, I wouldn't expect the steering for launch to be out of the three. So for me, he would be the bet. In the Oracle, brewing up a storm would be the bet for me, each way as well. I'm not convinced by these Irish chasers, Notebook and Cash, but they weren't good hurdlers. And although I know horses improve for fences, brewing up a storm was a, a stone better than these horses over hurdles. And if he can take the drop in distance from two miles four to two miles in his stride, I think he'll give them all uh, plenty to think about at 7-1. to one. Ollie Murphy's in really, really good form just now, and I think Brewing Up a Storm's the one for me in the article. And the champion hurdle, sadly, if it was a form-based selection, you'd have to go for Epitant, but on value grounds, I'd go for Coeur Sublime. The mayors. We've got Honeysuckle, we've got to try and be confident, although I think Benny's going to be the rightful favourite. And Champagne Platinum, like I talked about, was one of my handicap horses. I'm quite keen on him if he gets in for that last race on the Tuesday. On the Wednesday, it's a bit more difficult. Bets to nothing, or each way bets are Sporting John to give in by Allen a, a difficult time in the Ballymore. I, I'm not convinced by end by Allen there were two miles five myself. For me, if that was my horse, he'd be in the Supreme or the Champion Hurdle. I wouldn't mind him having a go at that. So that's where I'd go with him. I wouldn't, I, I'd wouldn't. i be against him in the Ballymore, to be honest. And uh, Sporting John would be my selection in that. And someone put that in the comments last week, and I wouldn't disagree at all. And Manila Indo looks a bit to nothing in the RSA, where they're saying Alaho may go. And I did mention him on the video two weeks ago. Uh, for the marsh and I still believe that's where he should go I think if he goes to the marsh he'd go there with a great chance I think if he goes to the RSA he might be just a waste of a bullet to be honest and uh, I think Willie Mullen should be thinking about taking him to the marsh but obviously who knows Willie could be right Alaho could win here but for me I I'd have Alaho in the marsh and I'd take uh, Manila Indo each way in the RSA um, the bumper there's a 7-4 favourite and appreciate it. But for me, if Fernie Hollow can settle better like he did on Saturday, I know it was a Mickey Mouse race on Saturday, but if he can settle better, he might be an each way bet in the bumper at around 12-1. to 1. But he'd be the least inspiring of the selections I've put up for day one and day two. So I'm well aware that we need to start betting some more of the bank. I'm also well aware... I'm not putting bets up until I'm confident on them because I want to win and I'm backing them all. I'd love to make a third profit in a row. And as such, I've got to find value bets and uh, bets which I feel can make it a profit. I was so confident on Riders on the Storm before he ran last week. Really, really disappointed that they did go there. But they're not disappointed. They've won a grade one and good luck to them. But it didn't help our bet having such a hard race. So, on the lookout for bets, lying, lying in bed some nights thinking about what bets I can put out. <laughs> I just can't find bets at the moment, but I'm sure the handicaps will produce a bet. I have actually looked at another horse in the Kim Muir with a view to a bet, and I may put that out, even though it's against Kilfulham Cross. I think it might be a value price. So, yes, I'm looking for bets. I'm well aware that everyone wants a bet. I probably haven't got any winnings left because I've left it so long. But I want to put the right bets up when I put them up. So for now, sadly, it's uh, me wishing you a good week without giving you a bet. But I'll be back to you soon. Have a great week. And thanks for watching today. Bye for now.